Girl, I wasted so much time on that other video. I was in there 10 minutes listening to Method Man. I was listening to Kanye, Method Man, Red Man. I was just listening to some music. I was talking about it. I'll pr I may put it in here a little bit because it was a lot. I just played music and I was rolling the reefer up while I was listening to Method Man. Y'all got these cute little lip oils. I tried to stay away from lip oils for a long time because when they first came out, they were too um, watery for me. They weren't thick enough. You know, I like my grandmother used to say, look like you got chicken grease on your lips. Take that lip lip gloss off. Lip, remember when lip glass first came out by MAC? Girl, let me tell you something. I used to, baby, when I tell you, I used to slather that on my lips. <laughs> my grandmother used to be like, if you don't take that chicken, that look like you got a chicken grease on your lips. Take the chicken grease off your lip. So and then I got some lip oil about two years ago and it was too, it wasn't thick enough. So when it like went on my lip, it would slide basically. So then the other day we went to Target and um, I was like, I need some lip glosses, right? So I got a lip gloss from me, the places where I get my eyelashes from, which is kind of cute. It's cute or whatever. It's a little pink tone, but I love a oil. I love a regular lip. If it's, if I have a lip color on, you rarely see me in a lip color, but if it is, it's very nude-ish. It's very neutral. It's very nude. So I was like, let me get a, a, let me try these lip oils. And I couldn't see the consistency, but it looked like it was kind of thick. And the applicator was the little furry applicator. So I was like, oh, maybe it's thick, right? So I got this Milani fruit fetish by it's passion fruit and coconut. I don't even, does it really smell? I don't know, but it's so thick. This is not a beauty channel, honey, but I, I love lip glosses, but look, it's so thick. <laughs> It's thick. Did you see? See how thick it is? And it just goes on so thick. I love thick. I love it. I love it. And it's moisturizing. You know what I'm saying? My lips have gone back to its natural color over the summer. Go look at my old videos. <laughs> over the summer, baby, my lips was so dark. Like my whole pig, my pigment when I, the baby. Because from the earth, honey. That's what it should be looking like clay. The other day I was looking at my skin like, girl. Why does your skin look like clay? And then I was like, girl, because you're from the earth. You're from the earth, girl. But yeah, and uh, my lips, if you go back and watch some of my, my videos from over the summer, over last summer, um, and you could see. And so I was like, yeah. So I got the, I, I love lip glosses. I got this other pineapple extract lip gloss that helps like keep your lips, because I smoke, right? So it keeps your lips like, you know, at an even tone. And then I got this in NYX fat, it's called fat oil and it's, it's lip drip fat oil. And this was just clear. This was just a clear lip oil. Um, it doesn't, they had other colors. They had like a, like a pink, like a pinkish, like a reddish, which will probably be pretty on some skin tones. Um, but for me, I just, I can't really, I don't really like lip color. I just don't like, I don't know. I just don't like lip color. I don't. And like I said, if it is, it's like very neutral, you know, very much so. But I love a lip. I love a lip oil. You know what I'm saying? Just a lip gloss like and you have the nutrients in there, some moisturize. As long as there's no mineral oil in there. And that's what I meant to see. I meant to go. This is um, Milani. Is that what it's called? I think that's black owned, but um, or it got it's for black folks. I don't know if it's black owned. But you know how the people be getting their damn businesses and selling it off once it reaches reaches a certain amount. Didn't the honey pot, not honey pot, honey pot been sold. Did they sell? No, it was Carol's daughter at first who sold. And now honey pot, I believe, is selling their their stuff off. And everybody's like, no, you shouldn't do that. You know, you know, generational wealth business. And if you can sell your business, you can if you can create a business from inception and birth it and grow it up and it becomes successful and you sell it off to Target or Walmart or some crazy shit like that, like, and get some crazy amount of money. Do you know you are, it's possible that you can do it again? So the money that you're getting from selling the company, you can more than likely do it again. And I'm sure that's not your only company that you have. This one just so happened to entrepreneur doesn't just have one company. Many don't. Many have like at, at least two or three. There are several streams of income coming in from somewhere. So if you can do it once, you can do it again. I have no problem with 
black owned companies selling their businesses off. That's what you do. You, you, you build it, grow it, sell it off, get another one, build it, grow it, sell it off. That's where the money comes in and the money that you're going to get from a percentage of the sales. Cause I'm sure if you selling your company, you're not completely selling it, right? You're going to get some, something on the back end and during. So I wonder how heavy, every Hue Beauty is doing. Probably as well as that athleisure line. Y'all bought um, Giselle and Ashley's athleisure line. Girl, when Potomac first came on, Ashley had, she had t-shirts. She had a little yoga t-shirt company. I don't know if she still has it. Probably not. So let's talk about Married to Medicine and Miami and just reality shows that we've been watching because i've been watching love and hip-hop too and i think i think we're going to move um towards combining some of these um reviews of the reality shows especially when if there's like I, no one has changed right we got to talk about beverly hills i haven't talked about beverly hills i've been talking about stuff that's on the blog and um so that's have has been the majority of our content in the past few days so married to medicine they went to hilton head right we know they went to hilton head and this is starting off from kind of the middle or the end closer to the end of the trip where they're going to have their couple's dinner and that's where they do their game they play their games they ask questions and stuff like that i didn't see too many games they didn't play too many games it was more of them sitting around and just asking questions and talking. Um, but before that, they sat down and were speaking to Dr. Alicia about the comment that Kima made of, um, that he made about the $150,000 not knowing where it went. No woman is going to be, if, if a woman, if somebody lost $150,000 and then you're like, she can't account for it and she's just like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it went to the kids. I don't know where it went. She's she's done something with that money, right? And if you are smart, a woman, if you are quote unquote acting like you're financially dependent on a man, please make sure you have your uh, mad day money. I remember when I first started acting like I wanted to go on dates, and my grandmother. And did my mother tell me? No, it was my grandmother. I want to say it was my grandmother told me don't ever go on a date and not have extra money with you because he can switch up in a second and you'd be looking crazy. Don't ever keep put yourself in a position where if anything happens, he might meet him a hot little nurse assistant or something. Is there such thing as a nurse assistant? I don't know. She might, he might meet him a little PA or something and decide he don't want to deal with you anymore. Look at Lisa Hotstein over there on Miami going through it, going through it. She, she's so dependent on Lenny that she really keeps just trying to, he, he, she's in a situation kind of like Ashley is where she's like, depending on this man to buy her a home but he told her if i if i buy you a home in this divorce can no other man live there girl what the fuck no you won't be able and that's why gertie told and then they and and larsa told her just make a clean break but she's so dependent and yeah i'm gonna tell you how dependent she is when they made a comment about jody not paying the bills she goes he's not paying them now so eventually he's going to be expected to pay the bills she's she's expecting a fully able body grown woman with a fully mature brain is expecting another able body adult male who's fickle and changes his mind um to take care of her and um i i i, I think the concept is weird i just don't understand it so you should never ever ever even in in a relationship you can be happy in your relationship please make sure you have money on the side especially if you're playing a role like he's running things. Mm -mm. You know how y'all like to say, I'm the neck. 
He's the head, but I'm the neck. And the head can't turn without the neck. Y'all be talking out of both sides of your neck. I would hate to be in a relationship that I have to lie. Heavenly told her, yeah, you know, I appreciate your relationship. Damon thinks a lot of the way that Kimu thinks and, you know, sexist, chauvinist, a little tinge of misogyny, you know. I don't really think they don't like women. I just think that they think that women are here to serve them. They've been told that. They have a whole Bible that tells them that, that the women are here to serve them. So they believe that. And that's why they get you in the church so that you can, in the religion, so that you can also believe that too. So if we get them in the religion and we get them believing this, then we can get them to partner with you. Heavenly told her, yeah, I lie a little bit. And we know Heavenly lies. We know Heavenly is a modern woman playing like she's a traditional wife because a traditional wife by all westernized descriptions stays at home she doesn't work she doesn't have a job she stays at home she manages the home that is her her job is managing the home i should correct correction her job is she does have a job it's managing the home and she does it for free she does it for room and board essentially Did y'all see that white woman the other day on TikTok talking about how she depended on her husband and she was damn near homeless when they got a divorce? She fell for it. Y'all want to mimic what the white girls do, but the white girls is down to TikTok telling you it, this ain't it. Watch a step. I don't want to have to be in a relationship with somebody in any relationship, romantic, platonic, anything where I have to not, I can't show up as who I am because I need to act a certain way in order for this man to feel like a man. I can't imagine. I, that is just something I just can't imagine. And I don't understand. I just, I don't know if it's faulty wiring. I don't know what it is, but it, I'm the one who came out of the factory who was sitting there being programmed. And at some point I was like, um no this is not it just like that movie what's that movie that that um with all the women were in their 1950s their 1950s um attire it looked like mad men the 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 streets were so beautiful everything they were in the suburbs and the men would go to work the men would go to work and the wives were just good wives and one of the wives she started having like glimpses like like what's going on? I can't remember the name of my movie. I have a I have a gif in my phone from that movie. Um and um she was a housewife, happy with her husband, having great they had great sex up against the wall on the kitchen counter, all of the things, right? And it was it looked like they were in the 1950s, right? Traditional wives, everybody's happy. The husband leaves and all the wives are on the at the end of the driveway waving at their husbands leaving to go to work but when you peeled back the layers she started having glimpses she started having glimpses of things that looked futuristic it, it didn't look like the, her 1950s housewife life and she kept having these glimpses of just different things. And it was fucking with her. And she started to feel like she was going crazy. But then she found out that what happened was in real life, she was assaulted and knocked out and placed into a virtual reality where the men that they are married to in this virtual reality in reality are incels and they find a woman that they like they find a way to assault her and to get her knocked out and then they put her they knock her out and put her in a virtual reality so she's living in this virtual re reality knocked out not knowing that she's 
in a virtual reality until she starts having, it starts shorting. She starts having glimpses. And then when you look at the men in the real life, they're these sweatshirts, dark circles under the eyes, hair oily and all tousled over their hair, basement dwellers. They didn't trick the women. All the women are tricked. Some of the women know that they're in a virtual reality. And this is the life that they want. And she's there and she's breaking up the virtual reality. Trying to get out. Because they said, don't go past, don't go past this mark. And she was like, why can't we go past it? It's stuff that happens out there in the field where they work. The men are going to work. They're in a they're in reality. They come out of the virtual reality. That's where they go. I forgot the name of the movie. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Put the name of the movie in the caption. You know, I don't commit too many things to memory. But to be fabricating in order to live this, quote, traditional, if it was truly traditional, Heavenly wouldn't work. She wouldn't work. So it's not traditional. You're just plain like it is. You're just saying that. It's really not. Did you hear all of them say when it's time to cook, just order the food? Jack, we saw Jackie do that. Order the food and just plate it. Remember when she tried to give him two little asparagus spears? Or was it green beans? She was trying to give him something and she only gave him like three or four. Something crazy. Always have your own, they told her. Always have your own. This is a common message with women. And, and people who, who actually care about you, when they see that you're actually going to go out into the world and try to find a partner, somebody should tell you, make sure you always have your own. Don't go into this idea and act like you're this person that needs somebody to depend on, especially financially. And then you still have to act like he's over the finances, even though he made a poor investment that lost money. So is, should he be over, should we, do we need to have a meeting, a family meeting so we can revisit, are you really capable of handling the finances? Because if not, I'm really good at handling finances, so I should probably manage the finances of this business. If we want to build, like, like I was just talking about the honeypot people, if you want to build something, you have to work together. It cannot be one person doing everything and then the CEO being like, I'm the head of the household. <laughs> no. People have to work together. You have to work together. When they sit at the table and ask, has anybody ever said divorce? And Dr. Alicia raised her hand because she said when she was pregnant, he expected her to continue her wifely duties, be a maid while you are in full mattress mode, right? Because when he laid you on the mattress, that's how you ended up with child, right? So you a mattress, you let him use your body to masturbate because you're not satisfied. That's what the surveys say. I had a woman tell me the other day, I was talking about being a single mother and how I think it's great when children grow up in a home where there's two or more adults because you have if you have more than one child, if it's just you and another child, it's easy. But if it's two, two different personalities that you have to manage. And so another adult, it doesn't matter the gender. It doesn't matter the sexual. It doesn't matter. A, an attuned, present adult, healthy adult there to assist with raising children helps because now you have two different perspectives or two different, may have two different approach or a reinforcer of an approach that was already given, right? Of somebody to reinforce. I'm a, I'm a solo parent. One thing that I don't like to do is repeat myself over and over again. I don't like to do it, but I understand that children, as they grow, you need to reinforce so they can create a structure, some organization, a routine, or whatever it is. 
If there's another adult there, again, it doesn't matter the gender, the sexuality, it doesn't matter as long as they're healthy, attuned and present and cares about and truly cares about children and wants to see children grow to become healthy, attuned, compassionate, kind adults. But the second, third, fourth, however many adults are there, they can reinforce. I don't have to keep saying the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, right? Getting frustrated about that. You know what she told me? Erica, I understand what you're saying. I know my, I have a husband and the, you know, the, they're the father, my, my child's father. And, you know, I've, no, they've been married since they were, they were been together since they were teenagers. But she says, she said, I'm, I'm, I'm a single mom too. I'm basically a single mom too. I'm just married, but I'm basically a single mom. I do, I do everything. One thing that he does is he takes the kids to their athletic practices. I can get him to do that. And I can get him to wash the dishes, she says. And I have to show him and I have to tell him, no, you can't leave this there. You can't leave that, that there. Because he more than likely grew up in a home where his mom did everything. These are Latino people that I'm talking about, that I was talking a Latino woman that I was talking to. So more than likely, because they're very patriarchal over there. It's, it's really no difference. Like we can literally, I can have the same conversation with a room full of Latina women. And just like La some Latina women, black women take pride in taking care of and being that. They take a lot of pride in that. So they reinforce it. And now you have your husband telling you while you're pregnant, you're not doing what your wifely duties. What the fuck? I'm creating life and you can't wash a fuck. Do you know how fucking mad that just made me? I don't understand how y'all do it. I know you have to be enraged when your partner expects you to do something that they can literally do for themselves. Get up and make your own plate. Get up and clean the kitchen. But nah, while you're in mattress mode, he wants you to also be a maid. He wants you to be the still be the maid. He won't take anything else. And you keep telling your community he's the head of household and he trained you. And Heavenly's like, girl, just act like it. Simone's like, Cecil was tired of me tearing his clothes up in the wash, so he took it over. There's no reason why you, even when you're in a, in a relationship, you should be like, okay, what was you good at? Like in, in your house when your mom made you do chores? Because everybody's parents, unless they were like oh, the women who, if they had sons, they did everything for their sons. No. I'll tell you, my children have been washing their clothes since they was in elementary school. Do you understand me? They learn how to separate their clothes, colors measure the cup, pour it in the thing. This is how you turn it on. This is how I've already told them, don't you ever get into a space with a woman and act like you can't do nothing because I'm a teller what you know. So when you sit down with your partners, are you saying, what are you good? Are you good at finances? You should know like, okay, who's going to be responsible for what? So we can make sure that this business runs smoothly. It literally cannot be a, just a CEO and then a worker just doing everything. And then having children to manage and home to manage and go to work, still go to work, still go to work. You cannot, I, I just, I, I don't understand why anyone would agree to that, even play a role with a man like that. Like he's coming into the thing, acting all macho and shit. You have to tell him, listen, that might be cool from where you come from. But if you want to be in a relationship with me, all this macho shit, you got to drop it. You got to drop it and you're not and you are not going to be not contributing in the labor in this home. There's that's that's not going to happen. So. Unlearn it. If you thought that you were going to get into a relationship where somebody was going to be doing everything, even while pregnant. No, that's not going to happen. Like y'all need to advocate for yourselves. But in this and it's weird because you're not you you are coming off less than smart, you're coming off weak and you're doing it 
so that this person, your partner can feel some kind of way. And I don't think that it's fair that a woman should have to do this in order for her partner to feel like this. That's not fair. It's not fair. And I don't even know why y'all agree to stuff like that. But then at the same time, be like, have your own. Why do I have to do all of that? Yes, I'm going to have my, he, he's going to know that I'm going to have my own. I don't have, it doesn't have to be a secret. Know that I have my own. Know that you will not be able to, know that you will not be able to financially abuse me. Know that. You have to know that. Yes, you make more money than me. Great. That's wonderful. More than likely he doesn't. But if he does, then that's great. But I am going to have my own. And we are going to have a, a separate account that is strictly for the home where we, everything that's required for the home is for the home. Whatever's required for the kids is for the kids. Whatever is required for food, entertainment, whatever the fuck, do it like that. But this thing where you're doing everything and he's just, telling everybody he runs this shit and it's really you running it and y'all in the back running like little scurrying like mice and stuff. But then you, then you got a, a doctor, a, a doctor like Dr. Heavenly lying. Like you lie to him to make him feel better. Like that, that's weird. Like I like Heavenly, but that part of her personality is weird to me. And I don't know if it comes from a, le a level of insecurity, maybe at the beginning of the relationship some insecurity where she felt like she had to do whatever she needed to do to please her man. You heard her say the other day, she would stick it in her ear if she could, if, if that pleased him. Are you, I, I don't know. I just hope that you're being pleased too. And it's not, and this sacrificing and all this stuff, that's, that's dead. I, I can't, so you're pregnant. He expects you to work. You want a divorce. You know how, what kind of fucked up situation it must be for a woman in her pregnancy to say, get the fuck out. I told a nigga to get the fuck out seven days after giving birth to a premature child. I said, oh, hell no, I'm not about to do this. The stress that you endure from somebody just being there that can actually, you can actually tell them to go. You can tell them to leave. You have the option. You don't have to stick with somebody who is expecting you to work while pregnant like that shit is crazy to me dr jackie's another one she expects you to work while you're pregnant she don't even believe you if you come in saying you don't feel good and you want to take the day off god damn it my feet are swollen i want to lay in the bed no you need to be going to work no what absolutely not um i just didn't like the way dr g referred to the women as females sitting at the table like what? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want Dr. G and that girl back. I don't know. I just, I honestly do not like that lady that came on the show with him. I don't like, I don't like how she came on. I don't like, like, but keep my husband out of it. My whole thing is, and it's so crazy. Cause it's like, they came after her first. They came after her first. Okay. So why do you want to be there? If you are constantly like, like her jaw looks tight all the time. I don't know if that's just the way her face is. I don't think it's the way her face. She just looks like, like mad all the time. Why do you want to be in an, you have an option. This is a work environment where you have an option. You don't need a girl. You, you got what you want, right? You got the, you got the baby emoji in the DM. You got with a psychiatrist. Yeah. Hell yeah. You got with a psychiatrist. You don't really need this check from from Bravo. And definitely you don't need it if you're going to be amongst a bunch of fucking old bitches calling you baby girl all the time. Fuck them bitches, right? Fuck you, bitch, right? Why do you want to be around them? Why? Your husband only hangs with the dudes. You don't have nothing in common with these women. They're old enough to be your mother, grandmother, according to you. Your husband is older than your parents. Like, girl, go away. Like, I don't know. I just, I'm not, I can't. I just can't, the vibe is off. I just can't get with it. And then you mad. And then the way that she, I, I don't really care for Jackie. Like I, I don't really have a lot of respect for her in that, in that sense, um, I, I, outside of her profession, uh, person, like her personal, the way she moves, I just really can't get jiggy with. But the way she spoke to her like that girl, why would you want to be in a group like that? And, and you don't even really know these women. That's the part. 
quad being there and cussing heavily out and going back well fuck you bitch fuck you they've known each other for a long time you're new to a friend group who stays in a friend group a new friend group where they have to constantly defend their age i don't want to be around you old bitches anyway cackling ass hens what they say on on um on what you call it on real housewives of new york they had their little aluminum party it was cute It was cute or whatever. Hold on, let me go back. I I need to look that up. I wanted to know how they came up. I remember when I was little and my it was in the back of a book. I want to say it was the Reader's Digest. You know, I grew up with some old folks, right? My grandmother used to read the Reader's Digest. Remember Reader's Digest? She used to read the Reader's Digest. But I think it was at the back of the Reader's Digest. It was a book that my grandmother had. My grandmother kept her face in a book. When I tell you my grandmother kept her eyes in a book, a newspaper, she was always, always, when I tell you that lady was so damn smart. I tell, did, I ever, did I ever tell you how I used to call her for crossword puzzle clues? And I used to give her the clue and she would be like, how many letters? And I would give her the letters and she should, and then how many letters, how many spaces? And I would tell her and she would know the answer. And I'd be like, damn. How did you know that Jeopardy? And Jeopardy, my grandmother was crazy with Jeopardy. Do you hear me? So smart. But anyways, in the back of the book, it had like what every year, like when you celebrate your wedding anniversary, what like um, element goes with it? Is it a? Is it platinum? Is it silver? Is it gold? Is it aluminum? Is it wood? And all of the years have when you get to a milestone you celebrate it yeah you guys know i mean you're married some of some of y'all are married so you know um and so they do 10 years is aluminum so everybody wore their renaissance outfits that's where ever gonna be a renaissance outfit everybody wore their renaissance outfits it was cute um it's hard to be in groups that don't support marriage i listen listen to me and y'all probably y'all say what y'all say about about me and think what you think about me I support healthy partnerships. And yes, no relationship is perfect because everybody comes from different places. Everybody has different ideas, perspectives, approaches, values, all of that, all of that. And hopefully you're married to someone that you share mutual interests, beliefs, and values, hopefully. But if you have some differing, that's going to create conflict, right? A differ, a differing opinion or perspective or approach is going to create conflict. That's natural. That's just human nature. But when you are being mistreated <laughs> and when you are being, when you are in a relationship that looks lopsided, when you are in a relationship where you are doing all of the labor, including emotional labor, if you are in a relationship where you're doing the financial labor, all the financial labor, if it if from my perspective it looks like it's not benefiting you i'm going to say something about it that's the ones that i have a problem with i don't have and i know that people who are in healthy attuned collaborative cooperative relationships know exactly what the hell i'm talking about those ones out there who have designed their marriage the way they want to design it they know exactly what i'm talking about and a lot of these women are lying to you. Their husbands are not paying all the bills because the stats, they're lying to you because when they report in the statistical evidence, it shows that a lot of these women are breadwinners. And to me, that's okay. Because if I'm in a relationship with a healthy, attuned, present person, they are not abiding by the social constructs that create dysfunctional relationships. They're not. So we're going to understand that this is a collaborative effort. We are both going in on this. This is not gonna be where you're doing the most of the labor, financial, this is a collaborative, cooperative effort to build not create confinements and restrictions 
that ultimately destroy. And that's why your marriage, average marriage lasts eight years, average. And the people in long suffering marriages feel like they're doing a prison sentence and they're lying to you because real relationships that work, real relationships in real life that work, it's a collaborative, cooperative effort. It's not sacrifice and compromise. If you hear somebody tell you that in their relationship, they're compromising and sacrificing, they're not getting a good deal. They got a bad deal. When you hear somebody say, me and my partner, we work together. He or she or they pick up the slack where I fall and I pick up the slack where they fall. We work together because we have a common goal and the goal is to win and we can't win when I'm doing laps over and over again and you sitting there saying go go yes it's great how are we gonna win and when you don't even join the race you just sit and spectate that doesn't work it does not work and if you're going into these relationships and marriages trying to play a role Understand the role that you're trying to play is unsustainable. You can't keep doing it over and over and over. You are going to wear yourself low, wear yourself down, whittle yourself to nothing if you don't act like you're going to play a role so that somebody else can feel a certain way about their existence. Their existence and how they feel is codependent on your behavior. No, I don't think so. Damon is whack to me in that sense. The quiet teddy bear, but you you are a quiet little chauvinist, little male chauvinist, sexist. I don't really care about what's happening with my sons. I know they'll be all right, but it's my daughter that I, I'm really strict. Why? Why are you strict? Because you know what's out there. You know that the boys that you really don't raise are now preying on your daughters. Because you haven't raised them. You didn't, you didn't, you, you so worried about her and protecting her, but you're protecting her from the boys that you failed to raise. And that's some other nigga in a barbershop raise his ass. Give him some advice. Phaedra says she feels that love is possible again. Did you see that clip when they were talking about their relationships and stuff and how they, and Toya, you look at, did you, you, you heard Toya tell? Tell Simone, if you get a divorce, it'll be 21 years of wasted marriage, of wasted life, she said. Did you hear her? So they want you to do time. And instead of seeing the, seeing the 21 years of your relationship as, yes, I had a relationship for 21 years, why would you see it as a waste? You built businesses, you got married, you stayed married for 20 years, you have multiple houses, your children are all off to school. How would that be a waste if they got a divorce, if they ended their relationship? How would that be a waste of her life when she made so many accomplishments? And the accomplishments keep giving. They keep, there's a, a ROI on the accomplishments. What, what are you talking about? The children are doing well. My rental properties are doing well. My, my job is doing well. It's this relationship that's not working. And I don't want to do it with you anymore. So I, wanted, I would like to have a divorce. I have an option to exit. But this is not a waste. That's what, that is the problem I think y'all have. And then you stay connected to somebody wasting your life. That's wasting your life. Not what you've already experienced. That's not a waste. What you're in and you don't want to be in moving forward, that's the waste. That's what you're wasting. You're wasting your time being in a relationship that's not mutually beneficial. Phaedra said, oh, if I was around people who supported marriage, yeah, I support healthy, attuned, present, collaborative, cooperative partnerships. This thing where these men don't have power in the world, so they want to come home and act like they have power for you. I don't agree to that. And I will never approve of that. And I will never approve of a woman. It's not for me to approve, but I will never agree 
or uh, I, I don't even understand how y'all even I would be tired of playing a role. Girl, you got to wear a mask at, in your corporate job, code switching and all doing all the things. Then you got to come home and wear and then you put on you take one mask off and then you put another mask on to play a wife, a 1950s wife while you holding the baby, baby sucking on your titty and you vacuuming and then cooking, raising kids, getting shit out the car. And then this motherfucker doesn't even know if, if the kid is allergic to peanuts or their birthday or their middle name. Come on. Um, they wanted, they're so happy that they want to, you know, do it again, right? Did you hear, um, when they started talking about remember, Toya went over before they went to the, the, the party, Toya went over to Simone's house and her and Eugene and Toya, not Toya, uh, Dr. Simone says something about sex, having sex, or now we can have sex. Now we can have our threesome or now we can have our orgy or something like that. And then they showed a clip of Toya saying that she had a dream that her and Simone had a threesome. I think she said a threesome. And then in the, in the confessionals, Toya was like, what is with all this sex talk? What is with all this sex talk? And then you heard Eugene say, well, maybe if you stopped acting like you were a sex demon. That's what I'm saying. And it's funny for me because I don't, I don't like, I, like candy is the same way. I feel like that what you give off, like you try, you're a try hard. Like you try to give off like you're sex positive and stuff like that. But then when people start talking about sex, you, you get real weird, Toya. She can't even say vagina, vagina, ver vagina like she can't even say it it's those people who act like they sex positive and when it's time to talk about sex they get real funny they get real funny acting and embarrassed and stuff like that i don't know what else did you what else did what help what else happened they told her to, to, to put her money that's what those are the things that stood out to me the side conversation with dr alicia always having your own i didn't like when doc um uh, uh dr minnie cooper said I'm I'm just glad all the females are present. You know, I keep in touch with the guys, but I'm glad she can be here with all the females. She don't even like these women. She's sitting up there like this. Girl, unclench your jaw. Take a deep breath. Jesus. Um they had their med gala. That was cute. That was very cute. I loved Toy, the color of Toya's dress. I love it. Um, I have some tweets from my about talking about Toya and at this party. So where's my tweets? At the party, when they were at um, Toya's house or at Dr. Simone's house, they're talking about the Med Gala. And it's a thousand dollars a person from what from my understanding. Correct me if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a a thousand dollars a person to have this party toya instead of paying the thousand dollars she wants to donate some wine that she doesn't have to pay for i don't know if she has to pay for it or she gets a discounted price but for some reason i don't think she had to pay for this because of the promo right that she was going to get for having it at her med gala so she says, I give a thousand instead of instead of giving a thousand dollars, I'll donate wine. That will be my contribution to this shindig that we're all throwing together. This is where Toya's act of being a rich black woman always crumbles, right? Cause you really live in like a rich black woman. You got your husband, your doctor husband, your two kids, they serve you. But there's always a crack and the tackiness comes out. Always, always. Now, I would have accepted if it was my shindig, I would have said yes. But we would also like a donation. Like we love the contribution. Thank you for contributing. We'd love to have and promote your wine and we'll put your logo on the step and repeat which i think is fair if i'm donating that's a sponsoring the wine then i'll get the step and repeat right the logo on the step and repeat she wanting to put up a poster tacky her her putting up the poster after the organizer asked her to put it down tacky again 
You can't even, I thought y'all was the core four. You don't have enough respect for this little party. I didn't like that Heavenly said that we're not going to accept the wine. I would have accepted the wine and said, like me, I would have donated the wine and then gave a don the thousand dollar donation. I said online, if Toya was not tacky as she is, if she had some class, she would say, oh yeah, I'm going to pay the thousand dollars. And guess what? Y'all, let's get some, I, you know, I can get some, some wine. We can sponsor, I can sponsor the wine. Just put my logo on the, um, step and repeat, repeat, and I'll bring what 50 bottles of wine. I don't know however many bottles of wine she was bringing. I don't know how many, but the people love the wine and they ran out of glasses and they were like, we would really like your money. And she was like, yeah, it looks like you would. She trying to shade them, but they should have been clear on we, if y'all want to donate, like if, if, um, if um, Jackie wanted to do like promote something of hers that she was able to donate, if she had a product like, you know, wine or something like that and donate, then put her logo on the step and repeat in addition to your contribution to the event. That's what I feel should have been done. I don't feel like it should have replaced the ticket. I feel like a classy, classy person would have been like, here's my don't, here's my thousand dollars to contribute to the event. But because I have a, a wine connection, I'm also donate some wine because it's, it's my event too. I'm putting in money. So I want to make sure the event is, is cool. Like, I don't even think Toya realizes like, this is your event together. So put the money in so the event could be nice, but then also be like, I have a connection. Use your relationships, right? If you have a relationship with a wine company and they want to promote their wine and, and but putting up your, your, po put, putting up your poster, what are we doing here? We're promoting our brands. No, you got the promotion on the step and repeat, not inside of the gala. Unless you were like doing like they were doing, they were auctioning jewelry and stuff. They were doing an auction or something like that. That would be different if they had like a silent auction going around and people had their posters up to be like, come over here for this jewelry or this artwork or whatever. But just because you were supplying the wine, I don't know, maybe a, a small thing on the table, but that poster to me was tacky. I was like, Toya is tacky. Why couldn't she help sponsor the event? I feel like donating wine is sponsoring. I feel like whatever the donations came, that's a sponsor, right? Remember who got married? It was a Sherry Shepherd, and she had a bunch of sponsors on the um thing. Jenna Lyons, um, she had a bunch of sponsors on something she was doing. Yeah, if I'm sponsoring something, you're gonna be giving something out of mine. I'm going to put my logo somewhere. That's normal to me. I felt like that was okay. Like put her logo on the thing, right? She's contributing, but then Heavenly, like, well, we don't want her wine there. Well, why not? Why not? You being honry. Why not? You being an asshole, Heavenly. Why don't you want her thing? You should have you should have communicated and said, yeah, we want your wine, but we also want a thousand dollars too, Toya. And if you don't want to give a thousand dollars, you can keep the wine. Matter of fact, no, you can actually donate the wine, but you're not contributing in the way like we want a thousand dollars and any additional sponsors that you can probably pull to make our event successful. That was weird to me. I thought it was weird. I said, why couldn't she help sponsor the event? She's providing the wine. What the fuck is Heavenly talking about? If Toya wasn't providing the wine, you would have to pay for it. How is she not sponsoring? I'm confused. It says the only difference between Toya and Phaedra did was Phaedra also gave $1,000 and that's it. It seems like the initial agreement wasn't fleshed out. That's what I'm saying. It sounds like y'all didn't y'all weren't clear you didn't communicate with toya like okay great we can have the wine but we also need a thousand dollars to make this trip us i mean this trip this event a success like i said i felt like she could have donated the wine and gave an additional donation but that's me but they can't say she didn't offer slash sponsor the wine. They could have taken that as her contribution, except they wanted her to do both. And that should have been communicated. But we would have liked your, your money too. And then Toya looked around and was like, yeah, I can tell. But 
isn't this your event too, dummy? This has your name on it too. This is not just Jackie and Simone's event. This is Dr. Jackie, Dr. Simone, Dr. Heavenly, and you and Dr. Alicia. And your because your husband is the doctor. So this is y'all event. Why are you looking around talking about, mm, yeah, you, you know, it was shady and it was funny, but bitch, if you would have gave a thousand, if you would have gave your part, this is your event too. Now, Heavenly getting on the mic and pulling the doctor, what Dr. Jackie did to Buffy and busting her out in front of everybody, I thought was extremely tacky. You know, oh, Heavenly is my girl, but that was whack as fuck. It was. For her to say, for her to get on and say that in front of everybody, that's embarrassing. But what do, what I say all the time, and I learned it. Little girls in elementary school, you learn how to harm another girl by tarnishing or attempting to tarnish her social status. That's how girls fight, men physically. Women, girls, they start in elementary school. I'm going to make sure the other girls don't like you. I'm going to tell the other girls not to like you. So I'm going to say in front of our medical community that this doc, the doctor's wife that was supposed to go in on us, go in with us on this event, she didn't donate. She didn't donate nothing. She didn't donate, not even for TV. Like you looked really stupid. And if I was a person in that crowd, I'd be like, why is she act? That's so unprofessional as a doctor. And then also embarrassing to your husband who you fucking worship. Why would you embarrass him like that? That's embarrassing. And then Eugene goes up to Damon, like, what the fuck? Like, this is, and you know, Eugene and Damon are like this. Like, they're close because I, if, for, if you've watched the seasons before, Damon is the one that helped Eugene get into where I, I, I don't think it's this job. I think he's moved since then, another uh, location. But when he first got into emergency medicine, that he got there like that through uh, Damon. So him and Damon, Damon was kind of like a mentor to him. You know what I mean? So he what? So Eugene goes over to him like, dude, what the fuck? Like, get your wife. Like, this is crazy. Like, I, I thought I, I didn't like it at all. There is nothing. I was like, she's too much. There's nothing. And it only affirms what Toya feels about heavenly and how Toya feels about heavenly. Like she doesn't really like heavenly. That's why at the beginning of the season, I thought it was fucked up that heavenly hopped on board with Toya against quad Toya. Don't fuck with you heavenly. And if you're doing this for the show, I I'm sorry, I'm not going to look stupid. Like I feel like she, she's smart enough not to look ignorant. And then she got on the internet and tried to it called um hell yeah dr hell yeah hell yeah hell yeah hell yeah <laughs> when she called dr g a pedophile did y'all y'all saw that and then she deleted and edited it honey they caught the screen the people caught the screenshot it's no use to deleting and standing your shit but she called him a pedophile and that is damaging don't say don't don't if we're going to battle and you start lying on me, girl, that's it. I cannot fuck with you. And that's the reason why I know Dr. G don't be amongst them like they acting like he is. I feel like Dr. G and Tanisha need to go. Like y'all need to go. But she came back and she apologized because girl, no, absolutely not. So I don't know, Heavenly, I feel like Heavenly needs to reel it back. Like I know you want the show to be successful. But you are starting to look ridiculous out here. For what? For what? For what? For what, Heavenly? For the success you are willing to look the way that you look in the like the way that she acted with Toya in that wine, I was like, that's whack. And the way she called out Toya, that's whack. And now it only is going to uh, help Toya and her. She's just going to file it in with the rest of the shit she don't like you for. That's why I just didn't understand why Heavenly was siding with Toya with this quad situation. Because you know you don't fuck with Toya. You think Toya is a lazy bitch who overworks her husband. You do. And you don't have no respect for her. You don't. That's why I was like at the beginning of the season, 
girl, y'all play too much. Y'all playing in these people's faces, trying to make a show good when you should just be who y'all were before. Just, just, just let the show be natural. Stop trying to produce. You see what's happening over there with Giselle. You trying to produce a scene. It, you're not, it doesn't come off. It's not, it's not coming off right. And you need to reel it back. You really do. You do. Overall, I thought it was a really good season. I, I would, I wouldn't mind not seeing. I like, I like Dr. Alicia and uh, Timu, but Dr. G and the other girl, no, I don't. Y'all like her because you identify with her and other things about her. I just don't. I just thought the way she came in, the constant ages shit and y'all say y'all keep saying they started with her first right so even if they did start with her why are you still hanging out there why do you still want to be amongst them i don't want to be amongst them she told dr g in hilton head i can't do this i'm crying i can't do this i can't do this we know you can't do it i gotta go take care of each other protect your energy let's get oh this video is too long let's get down in the comments bye y'all peace